So let's look at this. All right, so one of the things that you were asked to do is you need to work out your age. So generally age should be easy, but what I was thinking with this one, um, to do it the best way is to use the system date and time. So if I want to work out, so you guys must help me with this one. I want to work out the person's age. So you'll tell us just the year he's born in. And then we must say how old he is with, without assuming it's 2023. So our program must get the, the year from our system and then work out how old the person is. So I'm going to, um, let's say year born is integer. And then the year born we can get from the guy. So we're going to get a string. So we string to int our input box. Yes. Tom. All right, so let's rather say we get that person's ID number. So ID is to age. We're going to work out the age. What is ID? And then he, that's a default ID. All right, so now how do we want to work out the person's ID? So do you agree? After the age. The first two is this year that is born in. But now it could be 0, 01 and it could be 99 for argument's sake. So, who wants to help me? Let's step one the first two digits has to do with the year. So, let's get that. What can we do? Anyone? Okay, we will use the if statement, but before we do that, how, how can I just get the first two characters? Get, yes. So my year born, it's going to be a string. So I'm going to change my string to an int. And we're going to use the copy function. Okay, so we're going to copy out of the ID. And then what will my first value be? So, in the ID number, the first two characters are your year that you're born in. So, I want these two because we want to work out what the year that is born in and then try to work out how old he is. So, I want these two characters. I want 99. Yes, perfect. Starting at the first character, and we want two of them. So, that will give me that. Now we're also correct in saying that we will need an if now to just see this. So, um, okay, wait, maybe before we do this, let's. So, our year of now, or the current year, let's go, current year, rather. Okay, how can we get the current year? Anybody know? No. All right. You don't need to leave if you don't know. But we... okay, let's go. So let's create a, a, a date variable, but we can't call it date. Don't call it date because we're going to need the word date. It's like da type string. All right. So yes, how do we get current system date? Yes. Sorry, I was just clearly replying to WhatsApp. So it's a 
date to string. So we want to convert the data type date to a string. And then what do we put inside the brackets? Oh, no, look, so the one that I know is date. You just put date in here again. Um, but I think now looks like now will also work. So, what this does, this actually gives you the date according to your system. So, it will say 2023. Let me quickly show you. So, let's just do a show message. And let's put our DA in there. We'll come back to this one. Oh, I think we made an integer. I think we don't want an integer. I think because it's such a big number, we want to keep it a string. So the ID we want to keep a string. And then also the, the problem with that in any case is we can't copy out of a string. So I need to stay a string so that we can use the copy function. If we made ID an integer, then we couldn't do copy, and that's the problem. See, so that if you just put date in there, it gives you the date according to the system. So it's 2023, and then slash 06 slash 16. Let's just see now. I think now it works though. Yeah, now that's the same thing. So either now or date. Whichever one, both is fine. All right, so this will give me the date from the system as a string. Then we got the ID as a string. Then we just copied the, the year out from there. So if I just want the year of today's date, how do I get that? So my current year. So, what Sir will probably need to do is he'll need to tell you that nobody's older than 100. Once you get somebody older than 100, then obviously, then the, our calculation won't work. So, we'll need to assume nobody will be over 100. Now with this, do you agree we, we'll only get the 99? So that, we're getting the 99. So, to compare with this one now, do you agree? We want to actually get out the 23. And remember, we get it now. That's what we want. But what we're getting is a 2023 slash 06 slash 16. So if I only want this, how do I get that out? You agree, this also a string. So that's a string. So we can just do copy again. Because I just want that piece there. Everybody good? Yeah, so just, so the ID number, and then it's the year born that we got from the ID number. Then the date for today, and now we want the current year to see what's the so I said we're going to do copy and then what now? Copy out of the A, yeah? Yeah, and then. Alright. So we can go that route. It makes it a bit difficult because now we're going to st be stuck with 2023. How are you going to compare these two now? Um. See, but now if, if you go that route, 
you you stuck on twenty three again. So you're making it fixed again. You understand? I was thinking if we've only got these two. Do you agree? If if we only get these two, then if these numbers are smaller than those ones, you can do a certain calculation. And if they are more, then you can do another calculation. It's like if the person is um, this 23. So if this number is for argument's sake, let's say the person was very old. Let's say that was a 19. And you get a 19 here. Because this is less than that one. You can do a certain calculation of to work out how old the person is. If the, if the person was born with a 19 there, how old would the person be? And if this was 30, Ninety-three. Do you see? So by knowing that and knowing twenty-three, you can sort of do just two different calculations to work it out. Then you're not stuck on the twenty-three itself. So I want to say let's copy only the twenty-three. So do we go three comma four? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So remember, remember, remember. So how our copy works. See when you control paste. No. So copy again. When we go copy, it's copy out of what? So out of DA. Then index. This is where you want to start. We want to start at the third one, which is correct. Look what this one says here. It's count. So this is how many characters do you want to copy? So we just want to take two. Starting at the third one, but just two characters. So this is so key. Please remember that's how copy works. Copy out of that, starting at that position, and this is how many characters you want to copy, which is just two. So that will give us a 23 now. All right, so now we can say, so if the year the person was born in, if it is greater than the current year, what will we do to work out the person's age? What will our calculation be for age then? So this is this. So the year born, year born, is more than the current year. So that one is greater than that one. So how old did we say is this person? If he was born 30 and it's now 23. How old is the person? 93. So how did you get to that? How did you work that out? And then... Yeah, so there's different ways you can do it. You can do 2000 plus current year. And then do what after that? Okay, so, so with this scenario, how did you get to your 97? That's basically what we want happening here now. Because we're checking only if the year born is more than the current year. So if that one's greater, like 30. Out of 23. What calculation can we do to make that work?
a hundred minus the yebon plus the current year. So a hundred minus thirty is seventy plus twenty three gives us ninety three. So that's fine. If you went um, with my one base one, you could have gone work out the year, so you could have said 2000 plus the current year, and then you could have subtracted 1900 plus the year born. Then this would also work fine. So, if the year born is more than that, that means the year born, I mean, if the year born's number is more than the current year, it must be in the 1900s. Because we can't go to the future. So, just because this number is greater, it must be in the 1900s. And this one is in the 2000s. So, Either one, and I'm sure there's probably another way of doing it as well. But that's two. But now we can do our else. So if if it's not bigger, so let's say this is, um, let's say 10. How old is the person now if that's his ID number? So in this case, your age would just be your current year, subtract the year born. Say again, if you don't have... Yes, so that's how the else works. So, if this thing is true, if that condition is true, do this code. And then if you just do an else, it means in all other cases, if this condition is not true, do this. So, this else will actually do it if they are equal to also. So, if this, if the person's ID number was also 23, if they are equal to each other, it would still do this one as well, because it's not greater. And would also do this. So, but, yeah, technically we don't know if the person is 100 years old or if it's a newly born baby. We wouldn't know. So, ugh, it doesn't actually matter. You could go else if, if you wanted to, but you don't. The else just means in all other cases. So, if this is not true, everything else do this. Right, and then that is our age. And then you can just show message over into stream page. Yes. Um, Alright, so let's say we needed to display the spin edit. So I just put in a spin edit there. Left the name as spin edit 1. So then our spin edit one dot value which needs an integer is just equal to the age so you just give age to spin edit let's quickly see how this works so person age let's say his id is uh, 90 33 and 33 No, spin edits only for integers, yeah. A, a, a spinner, it's sort of the, the purpose of a spinner. You would see because a, a spinner is just to go up and down with numbers. Um, if you try to type in a word there, it even gives you an error. 
makes, I don't know if you can hear the same sound as I can hear, but it makes boom booms. I can't put in numbers there. I was trying to type in the alphabet letters there. Yeah, spin edit is only for integers. Alright, with H, we're good. Alright. So, talk to me. Hmm. So, you can, yeah, they can maybe say, make sure that the ID, if the ID is correct, work out the H, or I'll say error. So, then you can, you just sort of do the same thing, but then you just say, after you get the ID, you say, if... If the length of the ID is equal to 30, then begin, and you put all of this inside there, then you say end, and then you can have an else here, begin and end, and then you can do show message. I did wrong. See, so what I did was all of this is now inside the if just. So we ask for the ID, then you say if the length of the ID is 13, do all of this, end, else, error. So now it will only work out if our ID is right, if it's 13, it's going to tell you how old the person is. If the ID is not the right length, it just says wrong ID, and then it doesn't work out the edge. So to validate, you'll just do an if, and then depending on what you want happening. So if you only want to do H if it's valid, then you put all of the H calculation just inside that if. Um, all right. All right. So I'm just going to show you what I wanted to do with password. I'm thinking to jump to reverse first. With password, I don't know exactly what, because I think you said creating a password. So I was thinking creating random characters maybe could be tricky. And then especially if you want more than one, maybe generating a random number, combining them, and maybe create uh, getting a random digit. Oh, you know what? Um, let's say we wanted a, a, ran, a random hexadecimal number. Oh, where's the great day knowledge? It's, it's all gone. Um, <laughs> is it? All right, so we get number systems. Um, I you remember binary numbers? Did you do binary numbers? Nope. All right. Uh, okay, so it's, it's a whole another chapter that we can spend time on, but not for today. So number systems are basically ways of systems with numbers. I don't know how to phrase it differently, actually. But then the ones we use that you use in everyday life with maths and everything, we use a decimal number system. Because deci means 10, because we've got 10 digits we work with. We work with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do you agree? All, all numbers that you can think of, any number is always made up out of one or multiple of these digits. You don't have anything else. So a binary number system has only got two numbers. So they only work with zero and one. So all numbers, if you want to present the number four, it looks like that. A hundred is actually number four in binary because you only have ones and zeros. You get an octal number system. The octal number system has got eight digits. So it's only zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, 8 and a 9 doesn't exist in it. 
So you'll count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. After 7, it becomes 10. So 8 is actually 10 in octal. 9 is actually 11 in octal. So, and then a hexadecimal has got 16 characters. And that goes there. And that is how you would count. So you count 0, 3, 9. 10 is actually an A. And 11 is a B. And 12 is a C. D, E, F. And only after F, you go to 10. So, sort of just understand the idea a little bit. But don't worry too much about this for now. I think the main thing to just know a hexadecimal number is from 0, basically, to F. Alright, so let's do that. I'm going to help you with that one. So, who's got an idea for us? If Let's jump to this one immediately. Let's say I want four random hexadecimal numbers. Does anybody have an idea of how can I get four random hexadecimal digits between 0 and F displayed next to each other? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. We want to do it four times, so we need our for loop. This one. No? Random. You can use random range if you want to. Um but you do want a random hexadecimal number. So it will need to be random. You can either use random or then it should be a random range. But yeah, it, it must be random. Yeah. I really don't mind. Which one do you prefer? Yeah, then go random range. Yeah, so yours would look, you would say ran. Oh, wait. For random range, we need to put math on top here. Yes, so you put math there, and then you can go random range. And your random range is from one. To 17 right yes just remember that one's not inclusive so for the EHS people I don't know I don't think so taught your random range you can use it if you want to that's fine the random range initially in the early years the Department of Education didn't want to use this but then as the years went on they got lenient and they said ah all right use it so the only trick with this is, on top you must just add math by your users. And then how random range works, your bottom one is included, so this is your lowest number. Then your top range, this is your where it stops, but this one is excluded. So you must just go one more than you want. So this will give you a random number between 1 and 16. So... Either or, it really doesn't matter which one you want to use. Um, both is good. Let's stick with this one for now. I'll leave both there. So, step one. So, we want to do this four times now. Get the random number. But now I need to combine these four hexadecimal numbers next to each other. So, this is the important part. So, you create a variable like x. And you'll just say, initially maybe say x is empty just instantiate then hex becomes whatever hex was but then plus and then the stuff we displayed so it would be your con 
at position ram. So what this is going to do, first time, get the random number, get that character, add it to hex. Then it goes, second time, get a new random number, get a new character at that, or character at that new position, and also add it to the first one. Then it goes third one, then it goes fourth one, and then when we're done, if you then show the hex, the string variable, we should get four, theoretically. Let's see? Yeah, there you go. Four. Nine F O nine. Yeah. Yes. So when we start this button, it's always good. The problem what I did on the inside, the people that if you were here with last time with our theory lesson on Brax, I said Whenever you go, a variable must get the value of, if a variable is on the first time, it's on the right hand side of the equation, it needs to have a starting value. You need to initialize it. Because you can't have it here and give it to something, but then start it at anything. Because we say x, like the first time it's run, we say x should become whatever x was. But if you didn't do this, what was x? And we've got no idea what x was. It could be a random thing. We we don't know. And that's the problem. So because I put hex on the right hand side, you'll see I forgot about this. And I went here and when I got to this line and I realized I'm gonna put hex on the right hand side, I went and quickly initialized it. Yes. So that was like with your theory paper, I did say um, you guys can actually when so goes through the paper, you can have a look at that the so it's gonna ask the memo had a line where it wanted you to initialize a variable but it wasn't on the right hand side initially it was only on the left and then because it's only on the left you don't need to initialize it like ram because the first time i see it it's on the left i don't need to initialize it because it's getting a value already so this is a initialize and then i'm using it on the right so, so the first time you see this it's on the left every variable you should see is always on the left Initially, con is on the left, x is on the left, i is on the left, and then ran is on the left. And now you only see con on the right, but con was already on the left. And we see here, yes, and ran is here on the right, but ran was on the left before. So as long as you see a variable on the left before it's on the right, then it's fine. It's initializing 100%, yeah. This is a, a key concept to always try and remember. All right, um, yes, anything on this password generation? Everybody good? All right. So I'm not, I'm gonna skip those ones now because they are all sort of catered for inside this one. And then the next one is the reverse. No problem. All right, let's see this reverse. So this one, all right, so there's a variety of ways that could be asked. That the easy one is just reversing the string. Um, I know I saw in one of the papers somewhere, I don't know if Sir maybe, if Sir grouped all these difficult ones, <laughs> then, it's, then it's a nasty paper. But I remember there was a question that wanted random hexadecimals which was, it's challenging if you haven't done it before. And then there was one that re reverses each individual word. So what this one did was, let's say there was a high young. Let's say that was my sentence. Then what it wanted is you reverse that word and you reverse that word. But the words themselves are not swapped. You see, what this thing does, if it was hi, yan, then it became the N A J space I H. See, so it reverses the whole thing just. So this one's much easier. This one's actually relatively very easy. This one, not so much, because it's each word individually reversed. So. 
let's look at both of them and we'll go from there. So let's have a variable uh, send for our sentence. Um, and you can already see because we're going through each one of them, it means we're going to need a for loop. So we're going to need a for loop and then we're going to have our reversed answer. All right. Doing this easy one, let's, let's just do a fixed one. We're not going to do input box. Let's just get a fixed sentence. Yes. Let's say that was our sentence, just because. Um, obviously, this can be an input box, and you just get whatever the person types in. Um, now they want us to reverse this. Any ideas? Anybody that wants to give us an idea, how would you reverse this thing? Yeah, and then what do you want to do with the copy one? Okay, so what, what do you want to do that? Oof, we see, but now you're going fixed. All right, and then? Of your sentence. And then you count. Right, so the idea is sort of the wants to help us a bit. We can work with this. What else do you think? So remember with this copy, this does one character. So what do we need? Oh, okay, you must tell me. I thought that from one to the name, yeah. <laughs> then that's going to be stuck, and then you're always going to do the last one. So, now, so, so the trick is, oof, Baba, so soft. Yes, that was. All right. So, so sorting, I don't think will work good. Because if you see what we get now, is you still get the high, Jan, Full stop, my name is Sam. So it's still the same sentence, just from the back forward. If you sort it, then it's going to compare characters and swap characters, and then you'll see first all the A's, then the B's and the C's. Yeah. Um, just for interest sake, you technically... No, no I'm not going to confuse you. Yeah, so this is doing this... It's the easiest way. There are other ways as well to have done this. Um, this is really not the only way. If you're thinking of another one, maybe try it. Um, and you can, you're welcome to, if you, you can just send me like a WhatsApp. You're saying, sir, I tried to do this. This is my code. Doesn't want to work. And then I can help you. Um, so if you've got other ways, that's what makes, that will make you do better in IT. 
if you sort of just play around with it, create your own program that you want to sort uh, or something to do. And then, yeah. All right. Yes, talk to me. So what you are down to just means reverse. Because length is, it will be, I think somebody said 27. So there is like 27 characters there already. Wait, there's 12, V says, 13, 16, 18, 20, 23. There's 23. So this actually means it will go from 23 and then just downwards to 1. A normal for loop always counts up. So if you say 23, but then 2, 1. 23 is going to go up. So when will it reach 1? Never. So you'll see when we click this, this will actually create the infinite loop for us. So if I click reverse now. Oh, it didn't even create infinite. Never mind. Oh, it would just not run at all. It, it didn't do this even once. Because 23 is automatically more than 1. That's why it will stop. As soon as this one is more than this one, it's going to stop. And 23 is already more than 1. So it stops immediately. So it doesn't even do it once. So... Down to just says count downwards now. Don't count up. Count down to one. So it's exactly the same as a normal for loop. It's just the other way around. Yeah. Alright. Then. Okay. This one. Is a bit tricky. Because now. Each word. We want to reverse. Um. So, again, there's actually a lot of ways you can do this. Um, I'm just trying to think what would be the easiest way. Um, doing the parts, what I wanted to do here is also split it in words. So, it's sort of, I think doing it this way might be easier. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave this one. Think about it. I'll do it on Sunday. Um... Let me just think which way would be easiest. Tips I can give you. Yes, talk to me. So, um, what I will tell you, because we've done arrays now, so the, something you could use, there's a method, a split method. Uh, oh, what's split? Ah, no, it's not in a variable. 